طيب آه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين آه سيدنا وحبيبنا ونبينا محمد Okay, we are in October. October rolls around and suddenly we notice pink everywhere. Pink sign, pink ribbon, pink clothes, as far as the eye can see. Pink to October, or Zahri to October. We have to celebrate since we are doing Rest and caring about uh, press problem. In uh, October, as you know, is the Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Early detection is the key for breast cancer. Women are to get yearly mammograms. As you know, one in every eight women will receive a breast cancer diagnosis in their lifetimes. And if you look here, you see for estimated new cases, breast cancer for the female is on, uh, on top of the list, representing the highest percentage of women cancers and re <clears throat> representing the, common, the second common cause of death in female after lung cancer. But uh, we also we should create hope. The pink ribbon is uh, the pink ribbon is in, in an international symbol of breast cancer awareness. Pink ribbons and pink color in generally identify the wearer or promoter with breast cancer brand and express moral support for the breast cancer woman. So together, fight breast cancer. Organizations and people worldwide during this month unite to promote breast health and cancer awareness while raising funds to donate. And if you look here, you see, this is the image of global collaborations of breast cancer awareness concept illustrations. And if we look here, we can see a mobile unit to service rural areas. So more widely available services lessening the burden on patients. Breast cancer awareness is an effort to raise awareness and reduce the stigma of breast cancer through education. So we have to educate women on signs, symptoms, and treatment. Here are these illustrations for signs of breast cancer. Also, we have to uh, inform them and to teach them about the risk factors, especially those who are, uh, who are preventable as well as uh, to teach them how to do self-examination and to, uh, to inform them that breast cancer that found early when it is small and has not spread is easier to treat successfully and intend education people about the importance of early screening and mammogram. So it is time to schedule your annual mammogram. Mammograms are most are non-invasive and the best way to screen for breast cancer. Getting regular screening test is the most reliable way to find breast cancer early and reduce mortality from breast cancer. October is a breast cancer awareness. Also, we have to tell them, yes, all of us, we believe that the disease uh, exists. However, 
there are millions of breast cancer survivors. We should always create hope. ما أجمل الأمل دوما. ومن هنا بحيي كل أمهاتي وأخواتي وحبوباتي وخالاتي وعماتي وحتى زميلاتي بالسودان وبرسل لكم الرسالة هذه رسالة من شخصي وأقول لك يا أختي ويا أمي يا عمتي ويا خالتي ويا جدتي قبل الألم والشعور بالندم تعالي أفحصي واشكر النعم تعالي أفحصي أبعد القلق والألم النفسي اطمني إيش حياتك وانتعشي عشان تتخلصي من المرض ما تنتظري ظهور العرض سارعي أحجزي للماموجرام أحمي نفسك وأفحصي الآن لتنعمي بالأمان قبل لا يفوت الأوان سارعي وافحصي للكشف المبكر عن سرطان الثدي. Okay, here this is the full field digital mammography system, including the advanced tomosynthesis technique, and this is press biopsy guidance system. Also, uh, can be used to perform tomosynthesis biopsy. Look for these machines. This is the first dedicated mammography system unit. Was introduced in 1967 by uh, CGR France. Okay. As you know, mammography remains the cornerstone of population-based breast cancer screening. Up to date, mammogram is the only method with proven value in decreasing breast cancer mortality up to 50% and it can help to detect up to 85% of all breast cancer, often clinically occult. Okay, we have two settings used for uh, mammography can be used uh, in. What is the difference between the two settings? What is the difference between diagnostic and the screening setting of mammography? Any volunteer? Okay, Mohandas Idawar. Jindan. A screening may be confused with symptoms. Diagnostic be confused with symptoms, but it was not. Excellent, excellent, well done. Excellent, well done. Yes. Diagnostic mammography evaluate patients with abnormal clinical setting, so presenting with symptoms and signs of breast diseases. This one uh, setting in which diagnostic mammography can be performed. Also, after screening mammogram, when there is a concerning uh, abnormality or concerning issue, that after uh, after which. Diagnostic mammography should be performed to evaluate it. While screening mammography is performed for asymptomatic female through population-based breast cancer screening program. And it plays a central part in early detections of breast cancer because it can show changes in the breast up to two years before the patient uh, or physician can feel it or can feel this normality. <laughs> so, both setting, uh, in both settings, the prevalence of disease may differ and a range of, a range of breast pathologies may be demonstrated. The emphasis is on early detections of breast cancers. Huh. What is, what is, what is this? What about this image? What can you, what can you see in this image? Okay. Huh? What is this image? Mohan, this is a Jawi. Any volunteer? You don't like? Uh, this breast is composition D. It's insensitive for mammography. This what? Is breast is composition D. Excellent. This is a mammographic image. This is a mammography. First, you have to start by 
define what the image modality varies, and then the composition. As I agree with you, this is composition D, but this is a mammogram, a bilateral. MLO. Classification. Medilateral oblique. Hello? Ewa? Hello? Yeah, don't get a stop the hurry, Rabab. Get a stop the hurry, Rabab. The man. Oh, 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 this is a bilateral mammogram. Okay. Uh, MLO view. Okay. Is it pathological or, or just a normal mammogram? Any pathology you can see? Okay. This is, this is mammogram, high density. Low sensitivity, no problem. We can go. What about this? What is the image here? The right and left. And what is the difference between the two? No volunteer. Hello? Hello? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Al 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 right the mammogram digital shakl. But the al 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 left, I don't know what it is. But there is a very very obvious speculated mass. Okay, this is for the same patient. What do you think the difference between the two? If I told you this is the same patient, what do you think? One is digital uh, breast tomosynthesis on the left. Excellent, well done. Yes, if you look here, this is a 2D. See the pectoralis is sharp, and look here, the image is someone blared. There is some blaring due to a tomosynthesis. This is mammography and this is tomosynthesis. Uh huh. And what is the difference between these images? Uh, ah, Ferris from the left, this and this and this. Want to be familiar with the uh, mammographic techniques. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, what 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 is the the difference in the image quality? Uh, the first image on the left who's talking, side. Who's talking first? Um, I'm Abir Al Hadi, R3. Alan Abir, yes. The uh, image on the left uh -huh. has, has low penetration. Uh -huh. The mi mi uh, image on the in the middle, it's also mammogram, but uh, a better penetration. Better contrast, you mean? Yes, yes. this is the first one, is less contrast the image, and the second one is better contrast the image, and the third is tomosensis also. Excellent, well done. So this is homosynthesis, and this is less contrast, different from this. What do you think the difference between the two techniques? Uh, 
these are two techniques, not definitely not the same, not the same technique. Huh? Uh, the okay. first one has uh, low penetration, I mean low KV. Uh, no. Different, 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 different techniques or different machines. So, this is, will be, if I'll tell you different, this is digital. What could it be, the first one? The, the conventional one. Excellent. So that is a analog or conventional. This is a digital and here this is a tomo synthesis. Okay. And what is the difference here? Huh? Can you appreciate the difference between the two techniques? What is the image on the left? Digital. Excellent. Digital. Digital mammography. Digital mammography. Yes, this is digital mammography. Demonstrate what? Is it normal? Um, no, it shows multiple, uh, it looks like multiple um, rounded um, lesions. Excellent. Multiple circumscribed or partial obscured uh, lesions. Huh. So what happened? What about the other techniques? What about this seen on ultrasound? Cyst. Are cyst. cyst. Yeah. So in the other technique seen as seen as what? Sorry. Huh? Sorry, just can you repeat your question? Uh, on the image, the image on the right. How the yeah. how do these assist appear? Fat like fat density. How come fat? No, it's not fat, but it's yani, of low density. Low densities, okay. So low density on the ground of dense parenchyma. Okay, what do you think this it will be? If you look, if you look here for the wall of the cyst, you can see why the cyst appears as low and there is faint peripheral increased density? Look for this cyst. If you have seen this on MRI, how you can describe this cyst? If there is some, some uh, increased density in the wall, you will say? Yeah, and the type of the legion you mean? And if the cyst uh, this could be oil cyst. Oil cyst. Oil cyst in which technique? What, what is the technique to say this is an oil cyst? If it is an oil cyst, you will see dense on this mammography. On mammography here, you have seen an opaque. Even dense. The density could be mural calcification. Huh? If I'll tell you this peripheral high density is enhancement, so this uh, it will be. Uh, enhancing after contrast, you mean? This is dual energy contrast enhanced mammography. See? And this is because this is are, are seen as a filling defect, non-enhancing. Exist while some demonstrate some uh, enhancing wall due to inflammatory natures. Okay? So the difference between the two, this is digital mammography and this is a spectral uh, dual energy contrast enhanced mammography. Right. Mm -hmm. So okay, what about the, what is the difference in technique here? 
this one is it looks like uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not sure but it looks like a digital some senses it but I'm not sure look, look for the look for the vitrales muscle how it's sharp look for the skin how it's sharp the brinking is sharp so this is it will be uh -huh. okay so what about this one So I've just seen one before. Uh huh. Yes, yes the, the, uh -huh. In the middle looks like the contrast in dual energy contrast in her. Excellent. This is a dual energy contrast in her. So, and what about this one? You should be familiar with this one. Why? So this is because it's sharp. I thought it is thermosynthesis, but uh, no, this is not digital, digital mammography. Digital mammography. Digital mammography. And what about this one? MRI is control. This is the MRI. MRI, excellent. So MLO of digital mammography. This is the all energy contrast enhanced mammography, and this is. Sagittal MRI and the here demonstrating the same lesions as focal asymmetry on focal uh, on digital in, in contrast enhanced mammography the lesion demonstrate enhancement and well much more appreciated on MRI with intense enhancement and what about what is what is wrong in this image What is wrong in this image? Not showing the whole posterior part. More obvious, something more obvious. Okay, so what is skin tag? Skin fold. Oh, who said the skin fold? I'm Abir Alhani. MashaAllah. Yes, this is a skin fold. It's okay. Uh -huh. What about this image? Is it good, mammogram? No. If you technologist bring for you this mammography for reporting, mm -hmm. you are going the to huh? the edge of the pectoralis muscle should be at the same level of the nipples. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. What else? And the lower part of the breast is cut. Excellent. Okay. More. Uh, the middle on the. On the left breast, it's not, it's not. Okay, so this is, this inadequate mammography it has to be repeated, both breasts, okay? The pectoralis, insufficient pectoralis. All, by all means, the pectoralis, all criteria related to the pectoralis are not adequate, okay? And as well as the Lower part is cut. Okay, and what about this one? Are you going to repeat this one? Uh -huh. No. What is your evaluation regarding this image? It's adequate. Adequate. Yes, why it is adequate? Tell me. Who is talking? I'm also Amir and Hadi. The pectoralis is uh, muscle is well shown. Uh, oh. The lower edge of the breast is also present. The nipple is in profile. Nipple in profile, okay. Uh -huh. No cut of the breast, okay. What else? What else? No, no cutting. Yeah, I mean, either inferior or posterior or whatever, not in the breast. Nipple in profile. What else? 
and if it's important, a good visualization of the pectoralis muscle. The pectoralis, uh, what about the pectoralis? Uh -huh. How you describe the pectoralis muscle? Uh, the upper end. Huh? Um, it's well shown. Uh, I mean, the upper end and the lower end of the pectoralis. The breast parenchyma is shown below the, the lower end of the pectoralis muscle also. Okay. Any suggestion regarding the pectoralis? Um, it is uh, shown it should occupy more than two thirds of the uh? it should It should occupy more than two thirds of the breast. Okay. Uh huh. Excellent. What else? Maybe just the lower end is not as sharp as the upper end. No. Uh huh. Think about it. We are going by the end. I will ask you again. Okay. Right. So detection of cancer is reliant on optimal breast positioning and production of. That is why international quality standards continue to provide differences in described image quality criteria. That and our talk today is. It will be about mammography techniques, positioning, diagnostic quality. Okay, the image is a clinical imaging criteria, and because of importance of this for us who are interested in reporting mammography, okay, that is why I divided uh, into parts. Today we are going to take some of which. And then we will continue, inshallah. Okay. So, as you know, mammogram is the low dosage x ray of the breast that is performed by technologists and carefully evaluated by radiologists. And as general, the position of mammography, the patient is standing like this, okay, and the technologist doing for her the mammogram on a standing position, but can be done in a sitting position, especially if the patient uh, is sick and she cannot stand, we can do it for her in a sitting position. Don't say since the patient cannot stand, we, we are not going to do a mammography. Go and help your technologist and do for her the examinations. Previously, they, 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 they were a type of machines that can be um, moving uh, forward, you see, and the patient also leaning toward the machine forward uh, in a bending positions. So the gravity will help in uh, hanging the breast in a good position away from the chest wall and it has advantage in some women. No, not only that, and also the patient lie floating, uh, lie flat in a, on a table with a, a floating, uh, floating table top, you see, and the breast is hanging like on the MRI, you see, hanging below. And this is especially used for the stereotactic biopsy uh, system. But at the end, in all situations, the breast it should be uh, positioned between the detector and the compression grids like this, and then perform the examination. What is your impression about these lesions? Any, any suggestion? Is it benign, probably benign or Suspicious, or what do you think? Huh? For, for the one on the left, it is uh, irregular. This is the same, the same lesion. The same lesion. It is the same it lesion. Uh -huh. Different angles, different angles of the same lesion. So, 
So you will you will give by rats. We'll call it as by rats. Two, three, four, five. Which by rat? By rat uh, I think you five. By rat three. By rat three. Someone stay five. Yes, I think the, the, the cutting sign uh, seen clearly in between the dishes stripes of the yeah. rest. Okay, uh, this is the this this is different angles, huh? Yes, at least I agree. At four. least at least four. At least four. See, this is this is carcinoma. It's small, but it is a malignancy. Okay. Can you see it in this mammography? Can you see it here? No. Okay. Can you see it here? Don't tell no. Here the lesion is obvious. Yes. Where? Yes, posterior. Uh, at the posterior, posterior, yes, posterior superior. Yes, that is the lesion. So retrospective, the lesion is here in this area. So what is the difference between the two images? So which one is good quality image? The right one. The right is good quality image. What do you think the difference between the two image? The right one. The, the digital. Uh-huh. The right one is a digital uh, tomography. You think that, 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 that this is mammography and this is tomography? No, the right one is a digital one. Digital mammography. And, digital uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. The left is a conventional one. Excellent. Well done. The left is a conventional or analog and the right is digital mammography. So the contrast is much better than the image quality. And what is the difference between these two images here? I think the same. Yes. The one on the right is digital and, and the, the one on the left is conventional so and look for the difference here this is a digital and this is the analog so definitely uh, digital improve contrast detail within glandular parenchyma and more visualization and detections of the lesions okay so what is the difference what do you know about the, about the difference what do you know the difference between the two uh, techniques? What are the differences? Um, the image in the digital is being uh, processed by um, a computer before being displayed on a screen. Okay. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yes, yes. The detectors, okay. The detectors in the digital is computers, computerized, uh -huh. so it can uh -huh. be manipulated, okay? Yeah. And in the digital, the detector is in the yeah. analog, yeah. I mean, yeah. the analog, just analog the film. The, film. Uh -huh. the, the, the films, yeah. The films, yes, yeah. are the films. Yeah. Excellent. Taib, what are the other differences? Uh -huh. More difference. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe in the filter, but I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Any volunteer? What is the difference between the analog and digital? Mm -hmm. Okay. As you mentioned, the detectors in the digital 
is electronic or computer. So the image enhance magnified and manipulated further. Where the detector in the analog is film screen. So the uh, digital is faster, okay? And the radiation dose uh, is less by 30 to 40% from the conventional. And we said before, the time, the, the radiation, the uh, exposure time is much, much less in the digital, you see? And while there is longer and longer to receive the image, the image quality in the digital is higher and less quality in the, in the analog as we have seen in the previous examples, uh, while the, uh, digi the digital give higher contrast resolution, but the analog is still giving higher spatial resolutions than the digital, you see? And, uh, but in general, the quality is less compared to the digitals. And in the digitals, more detailed image, easy stored, and easy detections of a uh, cancer, especially in the dense press, because we can manipulate and uh, the cross correlations of the images and correlations with the previous image and easy storage of the image. It's also all these are helping in interpretation of the digitals and also uh, while in the, in the digitals is much less expensive the, uh, the system itself, as well as its repair. Okay, what is the difference between the image here? This is not full mammogram, part of a mammogram. Yeah. Uh-huh. What image? Yeah. Uh-huh. You mean the modality or the, the view? What is the difference between the two? The well, one... we, said, we said our talk today about mammographic techniques. Okay. We're talking about the one... all the techniques. Uh -huh. The one on the right is uh, tomosynthesis. Excellent. Well done. The left is? Tomosynthesis. Ah, the left, so the left, uh, I'm talking about the right. The left is, um, I think. Uh, huh? I'm not sure. It is, this is a, a image, this image is for mm -hmm. the same patient. What do you think? For the same, you have done? What? Yes. And then follow by? Tomosynthesis. So what do you expect? Digital. They will do 2D, digital mammography, then they follow it by tomosynthesis. What is the difference between the two? This is 2D, fulfilled digital mammography, and this yeah. is a tomosynthesis. Can you see this area of distortion and calcifications? The tomosynthesis demonstrates, okay? Yeah that this distortion representing an speculated mass with suspicious calcifications, which was not well appreciated in the 2D digital mammography. And we described before, we said tomosynthesis improve both sensitivity and specificity of the mammography and reduce the recall rate. Inshallah, uh, in the second part, we are going to talk about the technique of tomosynthesis. And here, what is the difference between the three image? It is clear. Can you tell me? Yes, uh -huh. the first one is the digital. Uh -huh. uh, and the second one is the tomosynthesis. And the third one is the dual energy contrast. Yeah. What is the difference? Okay. Well, okay, this is regarding the techniques. Huh. Yeah. Regarding the pathology, uh, the, does it show? The, the, the pathology was shown. Uh, uh, the one on the lateral aspect or the outer aspect was shown in the three um, modalities, but 
best in the dual energy. And the one which is central was shown almost only in the dual energy. Excellent, excellent. So the, the lesion, this lesion is well appreciable in the 3D demonstrate the more of the distortions, okay, uh, associated with this mass, speculated mass. And here, the contrast enhanced demonstrate the lesions is enhancing. While the dual energy demonstrate another mass, enhancing mass, could not well be appreciated in the uh, non-contrast mammography, either two, two or three days. Okay, mammography has a complex appearance. Many problems might not be visible on mammogram. And the variation partially can be attributed to natural anatomical differences between female populations. However, still there are many problems that can degrade it, the mammographic images and make it less sensitive and decrease the detection of breast cancer. That is why consistency in evaluation of mammography image in research and clinical practice is dependent on a standardized clinical image quality evaluation system. And currently there are two systems, one uh, ACR and the other European Commission. <clears throat> okay, the ACR described uh, eight criteria for mammographic image assessment and uh, in order of decreasing frequency, the percentage of these parameters uh, contributing for the uh, clinical image failure is on top, representing by the positioning. The first one affecting the imaging failure is the positioning, followed by exposure, compression, sharpness, contrast, artifact, labeling, and noise. Okay, we'll go through this. So uh, uh, the ACR having a manual for quality uh, control testing and the quality assurance group include the technologists, mammography technologists, medical physicists, and on the top of the pyramid is a radiologist with which is responsible for overall image quality. Though not always, but radiologists might need to supervise the process of conducting the mammogram. When, when the radiologist has to, conduct, to supervise the process of conducting uh, the mammography, what do you think? If you have, you see, an undedicated a technologist, non-mammography dedicated technologist, especially those who have split it shifted, are working in the radiology department here and there, and then uh, covering with them a mammography. So definitely they will not be so expert in doing proper mammography. In this case, the, the radiologist should supervise them, stand behind them and let them doing high quality mammography. That is why as radiologists doing mammography, we have to be aware about all of the parameters and factors affecting the mammographic quality. Uh, not only because we have to help the technicians, but also we have to follow uh, these images, you see, and if the image is not of a good quality, it has to be rejected, not to uh, miss a breast cancer. Exposure re representing 15% of image failure and either generalized under or overexposed, inadequate penetrations of the breast tissue. And in this case, obviously here, this is under exposed image not a good quality mammogram. And if you look for this, what do you think? 
Is it a good regarding the exposures? Is it proper exposure image? Overexposure. Excellent. This is overexposure. Why it is overexposure? I cannot see the nipple or the skin. So this is yeah. an overexposed uh, image. So it's not a good image. Okay. Uh, the compressions, failure of compression re uh, responsible about 14% of image failure. What about this image? Is it good or not regarding the compressions? Not, no, not well compressed. It's not well compressed as the breast parenchyma appears dense. Excellent. What else? Mm -hmm. Tissues are not. Not, not detailed, not, not, not delineation, not detailed, I mean, no contrast. And some areas are low and some are dense. So the compression is not uniform. Poor separation of the parenchymal density, non-uniform exposure because due to non-uniform compression. And this will reduce the radiographic density. And we need to have spread the over the uh, spread the overlapping structures of the breast, reduce the scatter by reducing the thickness and permit more uniform exposure uh, by covering the cone shape. Okay, if you look here, what is the difference between the two images? If you hear, it, the press is spread, but in the anterior press, still I have denser press tissue is spread is away in the other image. Why it is spreading away? Because in this image, they use the flat body while for compression, while there is another body which is tilted body, you see, that is give more compression for the anterior part of the breast. And here is being uh, spread and giving better uh, compression and better exposure of the images. Okay. So, Sometimes the female feel uncomfortable from compression. We have to explain for them, to tell them it is few seconds, but are essential, essential to increase the clarity of the image and fine details. Why, why, why compression? Why, what is the value of compression? Why you are doing compression? To separate the breast. To okay. the yes, we said uh, to reduce the radiation dose for the patients and to improve the image quality. It separates the overlapping tissue that might hide subtle abnormality below. Okay, as long as we need the fine details, we need to do compressions. Applying uniform compressions is, is spread out a normal fibroglandular parenchyma more efficiently. Okay? And this definitely will make us could see through that. And if there is any small abnormality be hidden, can be appreciated if the press is well compressed. And sometimes, as you know, we need to do more compressions. You see? The breast, the, the, if the breast is not well compressed, overlying tissue can look like an abnormality. We might see like symmetry, like a distortion. And this definitely in a screening setting, it will increase the recall. And as we mentioned, sometimes we might need to do more compressions, spot compressions for a specific area. Like in this here, you see, we can see something but we could not see the fine details. We are making spot compression with or without magnification. We can see, you see, the, the tissue here is spreading away and we could see the calcifications. While in this, there is area of asymmetry. Here it is spreading away because it was just a parenchyma. And can make the difference. So 
compression can help us to make the difference between uh, a missing and a, <clears throat> between the normal parenchyma or uh, uh, lesions. And definitely this, it will help uh, for early detections of breast cancer and not to miss a small type of lesions. Compressions hold the breast away from the chest wall. You see, by making a, comp because the breast is bendulous structures, is mobile structure. When do compression, it will hold uh, away from the chest and avoid the overlapping structures over the breast parenchyma. And this uh, also uh, by preventing the motions, we reduce the motion artifacts and it will place the nipple and pectoralis at the same location, which are, are essential for the image quality and visualization of the whole breast. But we have to remember that we don't need much compression. It will not add any more. We need certain level of compression. After which any more compression, just it will hurt the female. It will not add for the image quality. Just we need to, to wait until the skin become taut. When the skin become taut or the patient tell, yani, she cannot tolerate more, so that is enough. No need, no need to proceed and to give more compression because it will not add any more uh, improvement in the image quality. Regarding compression, what about this image quality? Is it good or bad? Huh? Good. Okay. Another suggestion. Is it sharp? Is it sharp image? Not sharp. No. So yes, it, there is not a lot of dense press, but it looks like a blurred image. Yes. Yeah. Yes. If there is no, if the breast is not well compressed, so movement of the patient or the respiratory movement or breathing movement can result in blaring of the image, okay? Uh, from <clears throat> improving the quality, we mentioned the improvement of the quality. There are many factors regarding the thickness of the breast and location of the structures and all this. And we said the immobilizations of the breast reduce the blaring caused by the motions, very essential. And in this image, because due to improper compression results in blurry image. Okay. The sharpness represents, improper sharpness represents 13% of image uh, failure, mammographic image failure. Okay, we need to have a sharp image. Poor delineation of linear structures. Okay, problem delineations of uh, feature margins. We need to have good delineation of feature margins. We need to have a sharp image to tell about the margins of a mass, for example, a margin of calcification, the calcification itself, delineation of calcification, as well as the morphology of the calcification. We need to know exactly to characterize the calcifications Okay, and to know the morphology, why? Why? Because to differentiate benign from malignant. See, different here, these are all benign classification, even including this powder like classification. This pancake type micro classification is benign because I could characterize it is morphology. While in the image here, these calcifications is representing the carcinoma in situ. We are going to talk in the lectures of calcifications. And also here, I could differentiate between this type. What is the difference between the, these types of calcifications? This is a coarse heterogeneous. This is a coarse, coarse heterogeneous and okay. linear. Linear, and linear and the okay. difference oh. between the, the difference between the two one is virat 
open is by rat 4 B, 4 B. The core heterogeneous is 4 B, while the linear is 4 C. So the linear is more suspicious for DCIS than cores heterogeneous. Okay. Regarding the contrast, is it a good contrast image here? represent 13% of image failure. Is it good contrast? No. Definitely no. not. No, this is inadequate contrast, you see? Regarding labeling, it is also essential and uh, misinterpretations of film, okay, is a legal problem and it, it, uh, it, it, uh, it's responsible for about 8% of image failure. And it's being considered in the image quality criteria. Artifacts represent about 11% of image failure and there are many, many, many artifacts you see related to the grid related to full-field digital mammography or structures from outside and so forth. We'll go through some of them. You have seen this definitely, uh, skin fold. And here, this is artifact due to hair. And this is image fogging, you see. And these are artifacts related to fulfilled digital mammography. You see, these all are artifacts. And these lines is related to the fulfilled digital mammography artifact here is being uh, calibrated and corrected. And this apparent skin thickening, you see, look for the skin, how it looks. This is also fulfilled digital mammography artifacts. Also, this increased density in the subcutaneous is related to fulfilled digital artifacts. And what about this here? What is going on here in the axilla? Looks like posterior. Huh? It's a magnification view in the axilla. Demonstrate what what is going on here. Artifact. What? Deodorant. Excellent. Who is talking? Uh, Abir Al Hadi. Alan Abir. You look interested in mammography. <laughs> yes, doctor. Yes. Yes, excellent. This is a deodorant. See, that is why we have to give the patient instructions, okay, after washing in the day on mammography, not to wear deodorants, perform perfumes, powder, talc, or baby powder, or lotions, or ointment, creams, or whatever. That is because it might obscure underlying pathology or mimicking a pathology like microcalcification because some of these powders contain aluminum flakes. Also, we ask the patient not to wear uh, or to remove jewelry if she's putting in the area of the neck and chest so as not to give an artifact and to inform the radiologist or technologist if she's pregnant or breastfeeding. We also, the technologist have to uh, have to uh, bring as much as data as possible about the patient by filling mammography report. Uh, mammography form, I mean, sorry, mammography form, which is fundamental for uh, interpretations of a mammography. And these include the clinical abnormality and its site, hormonal status to know uh, the patient if she's premenopausal, postmenopausal. Uh, if premenopausal, the date of uh, menstrual cycles, if she's pregnant, breastfeeding, if she's on hormonal treatment therapy, replacement therapy, I mean, for those, so especially those postmenopausals. And as we mentioned before, these having an impact, this physiological process have impact on imaging, and we need to avoid mammogram in the second half of the cycles. And if the patient receiving a hormonal replacement uh, therapy, definitely it has impact on the image 
of mammography, and we have to know about the personal history of breast cancer in the patient, how is treated uh, by wide local excisions, mastectomy, or uh, associated dissections, axillary dissections, time of surgery in case of uh, wide local excision or lumpectomy, and the date of radiotherapy, chemotherapy, hormonal treatment, all of these having an impact on interpretation of imaging. We'll see it in the next coming lectures. And also we need to know the risk factors, including family history, along other factors like radiation, chest radiation during early 10 to 30 years of age, and if the patient having high risk lesions, uh, biopsy proven, and so forth. So these are examples of mammography questionnaires. Okay, what is going on here? What is the problem in the image? Is it a problem or a lesion? I think it's a, a benign lesion. Okay. It looks like hamartoma. You, you mean there is a problem or a lesion? I think the uh, level of pill, the pill, uh, not, has not come inside. into the yes, the level of the nipple come. Yeah. Anyone, the anyone going to talk? Tell me. Um. Uh, X, and then tell uh, tell the results. Who is talking? Who said the nipple? Yes, you are correct. Be confident. Uh, I think the label of the nipple uh, mm -hmm. is uh, uh, not put in profile and it comes in the breast parenchyma overlapping. How, how you know that? Uh, because the nipple oh. is not in profile. Uh, you could not see the nipple one issue and the other thing is? The label. Uh, uh, yes, the density of the metallic substance that uh -huh. seen in, within the breast parenchyma. So what? There is that a metallic was... density. Uh, what, does it, which... what does it indicate, this metallic density? Nipple apple. The label of the nipple. Okay. This is skin marks. Okay. Yes. Now here it is very clear. It is obvious that the nipple and the markers, you see skin markers is seen on the nipple and here the nipple giving pseudo lesions. See? Uh, these skin markers are very helpful, very important. Uh, helping the radiologist readily identify the nipples, identify surgical scars, raise uh, moles, skin lesions, I mean, like moles or other uh, normal features on the breast. And the, the, the radiographers or the technologists will put the marks and he ha she has to write uh, in the sheet, mammography questionnaires or this mammography sheet, she should put that, she put the markers at the site of so and so, or even if there is a bulbable abnormality or any abnormality alert, the radio radiologist or the patient concerning the patient, uh, if she put a mark, definitely is going to help us. If there is any abnormality underlying that, uh, mark, even if it is subtle, you will, uh, yeah, you are going <coughs> uh, to, to look at it and to interpret it. Uh, definitely, you will give uh, it a concern, unlike if it is just a notice by chance. See? Uh, definitely, if there is any subtle distortion or subtle asymmetry at the site of a bulb bubble abnormality, uh, you will manage it in different way than is just an incidental findings. Also, these marks are placed on the patient press skin. Uh, th these marks are usually placed on the patient skin before mammogram, 
and can be easily seen after imaging uh, the breast or mammographic imaging. Okay, these are examples of uh, skin markers in a patient having a bulbable abnormality. Can you see any abnormality in this image? The patient having a bulbable abnormality. He's a male patient. This is a male patient having a bulbable abnormality. Can you see the bulbable abnormality here? If you look for the adjacent pectoralis, you can see subtle mass effects even here. See, there is subtle mass effect. From, and from and MLO, uh -huh. from MLO, there is loosen lesion with a uh, fine uh, border. Excellent. Border. There is, there is, there is here. There is some mass effect and might be lucency. Here, the lucency a little bit more. So this is expected to be. Lateral, uh, expected to be on the lateral aspect. So, yeah. extended, extended lateral view demonstrates the lipoma much more obvious. So, this is helping us. If, if they did not put the marker, this can be easy missed mm -hmm. because yeah. it's more or less not very clear from the adjacent fatty breast. Okay. We describe all of the parameters regarding the mammographic image quality and the remain is positioning, image and positioning, which as we mentioned, a positioning is the most important, is the key factors affecting the resultant mammographic imaging. Incorrect positioning results in insufficient compression and presence of artifacts as well as inadequate uh, demonstration of breast tissue, giving poor quality image, resulting in inconclusive examination, and this re responsible for 20% of image failure. Okay. Any volunteer regarding this case? This screening mammogram, okay? Microlopulated mass in the left axillary tail, seen on MLO. The mass was not seen in one year prior mammogram. What is your impression? What do you think? Growing density. Mm -hmm. Right. Maybe in the oh. one year uh, prior mammogram, uh, it was inadequate as uh, pectoralis muscle yeah. was shown. Who's talking? Who's talking? Ah, Bir al Hadi. MashaAllah, Tabarak al Rahman. What did you say? You are. You... Uh, it is not adequate image one year prior to the. To Excellent. The this is not adequate. This is not adequate MLO. Why it is not adequate MLO? Because of the uh, pectoralis, as the pectoralis muscle is not well shown. The pectoralis is not a proper pectoralis, you see, not well shown, a narrow pectoralis. That is why I cannot depend on this image to say the lesion was not seen in, the, uh, in this image. So I will. What is next? How I can have I have to repeat the image at that time? This is one year, one year before. To clarify by other things. That passed. This class finished one year and they could not recognize it and that. So? We should, if, if the patient came to you, you see, you should ask and you should look for much more previous mammogram. Don't depend on only one previous mammogram. See? When they reviewed the earlier mammogram since uh, 2012, the lesion was there and 
huh? growing, intelligence is growing, but missing on 2015 to, to be larger seen on 2016. So this is, we, we, we call it as, What? Growing as Uh-huh. Now it is a mass, but from here I can say this before becoming a mass. Could be a lymph node, it's a memory lymph node. Uh -huh. What? What are the type of asymmetries? This is developing asymmetry because it increases Excellent. the sun. Excellent. This is a developing asymmetry. This is a developing asymmetry and it's highly suspicious. And this is a patient having a cancer. See? But I have shown the image. Why? To understand that improper positioning huh, can easily miss cancer. They have missed the cancer here because the patient not well positioned and definitely result in poor quality image and between, between this and this, huh? look for between, definitely the lesion it was there. I have to see it here, but because I did not put the pictorialis, I did not do a proper MLO, that is why the lesion was missed. Missed in 2015 as it was not included on MLO view. So positioning is the goal for the goal for mammographic positioning should to bring the breast back to its natural anatomic position with the nipple perpendicular to the chest wall on both standard view to maximize visualization of breast tissue and to avoid superimposition of the structures. These are the, yeah, the standard uh, criteria to for or the goal for doing a good positioning. What is what is wrong here between uh, in these two images? This image is cutting from down and I could not see the posterior inferior portion, we call it a stagging. Here, the, detect the detectors is too high. That is why this part of the breast is being cut. We call it a sagging breast. Considerable posterior inferior portion is not included in the image. While in this image, is hanging down. The detector is too low and the breast, the nipple is going hanging down okay and this can result in skin faults if you look here you can see all this because the detector is down so we need to make the patients as close as possible to the uh, mammography machine and to the detectors and, uh, and adjustment, it should be by the patient habitus, see? And the detector should not be as low as we have seen or as high as can result in hanging. It should be adjusted well, okay? And this also to avoid the rolling of the nipple and the skin fold and all these problems, if we, we, we could not adjust the, the 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 machines and if you compare these two positions look here there is gap between the press and the and the detectors while here there is no gap look for the press here the posterior inferior portion is cut when they brought it more close here it could be visualized so any minor minor fault in positioning can result in big fault in the image and missing of uh, breast cancers, okay? And 
the patient, uh, the patient made to lean forward toward the machine to bring the press closer to the detector. This will result in a forward stretching of the press and inclusion of the superior or posterior portion of a mammogram. And the press should be pulled up away from the chest wall. Okay? Right. We have two standard view of mammography, two projections, medulateral oblique view and CC view. Why? Why we need to do routinely or to perform routinely two views? Why? Why we need the two views? Any suggestion? Uh, we cannot scan all press in one view. We cannot what? Scan all press as uh -huh. one view, in only one view. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Uh, 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 Any 2D lesion has to be seen in two views. And uh, to differentiate between overlap of breast tissues and um, masses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two views can help us. Can you see an abnormality in this image? This is our patient. This is a CC view. Definitely doesn't show part of the posterior press because on MLO, look the image demonstrate to multifocal malignancy. See? So two views allow visualization of breast pathology, increase the sensitivity and early detection of breast cancer. We might the lesion might not see in one view and be visualized in the other view. Again, if you look here, this is the lesions better visualized here retrospective you can see something here so if it is not seen on mlo easy be missed in the cc view so the two projections give us 20 25 percent of cancer that might be overlooked with a single view and press tissue uh missed on one projection should be include, included on the other uh, projections. And the two mammography combining MLO and the CC, it will create a three-dimensional representation for the breast. And that allow visualization of breast pathology, increase the sensitivity of mammography and early detection of breast cancer. Uh, and then it definitely will reduce the incidence of interval cancer. Similarly, mammographic feature that appear benign in one projection might appear suspicious in the other, on the other projections. See, you might see something as just area of asymmetry and in the other projection might show it as a distortion or a speculated mass or it appear more suspicious that warrant to go further for biopsy. Okay, what is the most single important view? MLO. MLO. Why? Because it includes up to the pectoralis muscle and includes the axilla. Yes. It is the single most useful mammographic projections, the MLO. It provides the greatest amount of breast tissue in a single projection. And why it is an oblique, not just a lateral view? We have mentioned this before. We said- Yeah, because it has uh, to take the hold of the breast. Yeah. Yes. So we have to, uh, yes, so align uh, a perpendicular to the uh, axis of the pectoralis so we could visualize, you see, as maximum breast extending up to the axilla. It does not apply 
to the patient, but rather to the plane of the of breast compression. Depending on the anatomy of the individual breast, these angles it varies. You see, it can be usually it should be oblique, forty-five, but with the body habitus can be as low as thirty or as high as sixty. Okay, there is um, uh, this is this here. This is the MLO. Okay, and the il these illustrations show the MLO, which the image form uh, the medial sides. Look, the radiation going from the medial toward uh, the lateral side. Side, I mean. Okay. Uh, medulateral, this is a medulateral oblique view, both pressed. Okay. Uh, offer best opportunity to visualize the maximum amount of the breast and the uh, amic tissue in the tail of the breast missed on CC. It will be visualized on the MLO and demonstrate the extreme posterior upper outer quadrant. However, the anterior and central and medial portion relatively distorted in MLO. Okay. As we mentioned before, you see, the breast is passing lateral, sometimes passing lateral to the pectoralis muscle as shown here and the other is being surgically removed. That is why we need to visualize all of these breasts as we have seen here. And this is the reason why we are going uh, obliquely. And also we have to know that the breast is a mobile structure but it has some part of which is fixed to the chest wall, which is the medial and superior while the inferior and lateral are mobile. So we, while using, we, uh, uh, while doing mammography, we need to move the breast from the mobile toward the fixed part where we can make a compression to, to fix it in, in, in that place, you see, to uh, ensure much more breast tissue being included into the image. So the two most important principles in positioning is to move the, uh, is to move the mobile tissue toward the fixed tissue and to avoid moving, moving the compression bedels Again, is the fixed tissue. And also we mentioned before that, yes, this is the usual area of the breast, but the breast can be extending up to the clavicles, up to the sternum, down to the upper abdomen, laterally to the mid axillary lines. You see, these can be extended, this can all be area of extension of the breast. We have uh, all this area we can, we need to consider it while we are doing our techniques. See? And the, the technologies have to adjust the accessory breast tissue here. You see, there are certain techniques to relax the pectoralis by certain techniques, like just make the shoulder down, elevating the elbow and flex it, and this will help to bring this accessory breast tissue. Here, this is the technologist putting her hand here into the axilla along, and this is the line of the back trolleys. See, and uh, the gantry, you see, it has to be uh, come parallel to the to the pectoralis deep going up deep into the axilla just between the latissimus dorsi 
and the pectoralis to ensure the maximum inclusion of the breast. The corner of the detector, we said, should be between the latissimus dorsi and the pectoralis. Here, this is the corner of the detectors, ideally placed high into the axilla as shown in these uh, pictures, and then the compression bills will be at the level of the technologies thumb here. That is to ensure that most of the press, it will be included. Okay, this is uh, a medulateral oblique view. As we mentioned, look for the image here, the patient will lean forward. Also this will help and the shoulder just will, will uh, put it above the machines and, and make it relax. By relaxation of the shoulder, will bring the pectoralis will come will be relaxed and the and the breast tissue uh, coming into the field of view. Okay, and this also uh, will help uh, will help to to uh, the breast should be pulled up and uh, away from the chest wall as compressions. This will help us to open the inframammary fold. Okay, so the medial, uh, medulateral oblique view, what are the uh, clinical criteria to evaluate the medulateral oblique view? Are the, the image should demonstrate the axilla, axillary tail, inframammary fold, and all press tissue. The nipple should be aligned uh, and should be in profile, and then the pectoralis should be adequate. The lower edge uh, of the pectoralis should be at the level of the, or below the level of, uh, at or below the levels of the posterior nipple lines, and the posterior nipple line should be within one centimeter of measurable uh, of the CC view. And the MLO uh, of both breasts should give uh, a V-shape and the presence of submammary angles here or inframammary fold, it should be open and it should avoid uh, artifacts and skin folds. What about this image regarding the positions? Is it good or not as MLO? Uh -huh. Is it good or not good regarding the MLO? This bilateral. Any volunteer? Hello? 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 Hello, <laughs> and uh, narrow down the apex below the nipples and it having the straight borders and giving a V-shape mirror image bilateral uh, MLO. And what about this one? Is it an adequate? Is it perfect mammography? Not, just not. Yes. The Why? paralysis above the nipple. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. The axillary yes, fold. Yeah, the... Excellent. The inframammary fold, yes. Mm -hmm. It is mirror image V shape, but the inframammary fold is not open, is not shown. Mm -hmm. And what about this here? This is adequate. This is inframammary fold is open. Here, the inframammary angle is shown but it is not adequate because of the overlapping structure. This is abdominal 
uh, abdominal muscles structures, you see, uh, the belly is projecting over the, the, the inferior part of the chest. That is why it is not an, not an adequate mammography. Okay. We mentioned about pectoralis, but we need to mention again and again and again. Why? Why? Because pectoralis is the key component, serve as anatomical landmark resulting in decisive quality factor okay? to ensure proper positioning and therefore maximizing the amount of breast tissue including into the mammogram. So the amount of vitralis reflecting the amount of the breast tissue on the image. Okay. Furthermore, we have to remember that the pathology, most of the pathology occur in upper outer quadrant. We need to have to see this part of the image. We don't like to miss this part. Very important to reduce the number of false negative and increase the sensitivity of mammography. So pectoralis muscle margin should be well visualized. Each of the following factors plays important role in maximizing the amount of breast tissue and pectoralis. What are these factors we are going to talk about? Do you know? We mentioned before, but can you mention it again? Mm -hmm. What are the factors related to the pectoralis? Positioning, compression. Uh -huh. The pectoralis itself, we need, we have, there are factors, just we have to evaluate for each mammogram to say this MLO, okay, is adequate or not adequate regarding the pectoralis. It should be mirror image, uh, we shape, it should be below. A mirror image. Zenibil or at, like at the level of Zenibil. Okay. Like, uh huh. Yeah, and V-shape, and what? it is B at the level of the, it's at the level of the nipple or below. Excellent, this is one, uh-huh. And uh, V-shape, uh -huh. should, should be, this, take this a V-shape. shape if it is V-shape and high, what is, what is the use of that? No, I'm uh, talking about single breast, okay? Or a single Two thirds breast. of the pectoralis should occupy the upper part of the breast. Uh huh. What? What did you say? Two thirds of the breast should uh, appear within the upper, uh, the lower part of the pectoralis. Two thirds. At least two thirds. Two thirds above. Yes. So the pectoralis should be, the lower part of the pectoralis should be at or below the posterior nipple line. This is the same. Hey, this is regarding uh -huh, the length of the pectoralis. So the shape of the pectoralis, it should be triangular. It should be wider at the axilla and narrow down as triangular. It should not be parallel, it should not be narrowed. It should not be one, one line like that of the same width. Okay, this is regarding the width. Regarding the borders, mm -hmm. the borders should, should, it be, should It should be clear. Should be clear and, and, and sh the shape of the border should be As in this image, straight, straight, straight line. Straight or straight. straight or it should be straight or convex. It should not be concave. Oh, yeah. If yeah. it is concave, if it is concave, that means it is contracted. Yeah. That means it is contracted, and it will be more dense, and that means. When it is contracted, part of the breast tissue is not presented in, into the image. So we need to have 
the length of the regarding the length should be visualized down to the level or below the level of posterior nipple line, which is the long, which is the axis of the nipple. And the width should be wide margin at the, of the pectoralis in the axilla, relative to the width at or below the nipple line. And the shape or, or an obesity of the muscles, as we mentioned, should be convex or straight and loosened. Okay, if it is concave, that means the muscle is not relaxed and definitely it, uh, it will pull breast tissue away uh, from the chest wall and it will not appear as a reducent and definitely part of the breast tissue is uh, hidden, is not presented like in the case of missing that cancer we presented before. Type. Which one is a perfect vectoralis? Which one in this A, B, C, D? Uh, what about A? Is it good or not good vectoralis? A? In these illustrations, A? Is it good or bad vectoralis? Good, good vectoralis. Why it is good? Uh, it's wider above and narrow below. Uh -huh. uh, the lower end is shown uh, below the posterior nipple line. Excellent. Uh -huh. uh, while in B, it is high up the pectoralis. And, and, the, and the border is convex. Convex, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. The criteria, the most important, the three most important, okay? It's wider at the axilla, narrow down the lower level at or below the posterior nipple line, and it is convex or straight. While in B, in B, it is high up. So uh, it is not. The, is the not lower adequate. border is not. It's yeah. not an adequate. It's not an adequate. It's okay. Okay. So in C, um, it is narrow above. Is narrow above. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's not triangle. It is narrow above, so this is not an adequate. And here? It is concave. It's contracted. It's concave. Contracted. Excellent. Well done. So this is not an adequate except for A. So, pectoralis muscles, as shown here, should be wide up. Okay? Convex or straight border extended to the level of posterior nipple line. That is it. And this, to get these criteria, it depends on the equipment setup or in the patient position. And the patient position can be related to the skills of technologists or the patient body habits. But if there is any barrier related to patient body habits or whatever, the technologist, he should draw this or he should put it in the uh, sheet, mammography sheet for you. And if the patient have previous, so sometimes you might see this something or this uh, technical error is persistently seen since previous or uh, before and before. Okay. What about this MLO? Regarding a pectoralis muscle, it is okay, but uh, the inframemory fold is uh, overlapped and uh, there is some fold. It's open. This is very tiny. This is adequate. This is an ideal. Yani, this is only skin very, very small. Yani, not obscuring yani, even at the level of the skin. See? But this is an ideal MLO. All, almost all the criteria are present. See? Nipple in profile, uh, pectoral is convex, and look for the pectoral itself is loosened because it is not contracted and wider up, the apex below the nipple, and inframammary fold is open. And no part of the breast is cutting. So this is an idea. 
Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. Can you mute your uh, microphone? Okay. Uh, what about this image? Which one is correct? Which one is wrong? Mm -hmm. The left one, uh, the inframemory fold is not there. It's not okay. There. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And, and also the lower part of the trial is not shown. Yeah. So it's being corrected in the right image. Yes. Okay. Muscle not equalized down to the level of posterior. This, they said, will result in possible exclusion of the medial breast tissue. If, if the lower end is not seen like this, my medial breast tissue might be missed. And the causes, as we mentioned before, and here they correct it in this uh, uh, by after lowering the angles. They said this can be the angle more steep and they correct it. You see, uh, the, due to equipment setup or due to the patient positioning. Okay, they they ask the patient to face more forward and the shoulder and like that. Adjust adjust the positioning. See, and what about this? Also, the left one is not adequate. Uh... The pectoralis muscle is not triangular. Yeah, not excellent. Triangular. The, the pectoralis here is more or less uh, one, one line, yani one, one, one thickness is going like that. It's narrow, narrow pectoralis. While here, the, the shape of the pectoralis is triangular. Yes. Okay, so the pectoralis is narrow in the axilla. It is thicker after the adjustment in the right side. So the margin of the muscles at the axilla narrow result in potential exclusion of posterior breast, medial and lateral. It might be not included into the image. Same process, either equipment setup or patient positioning. So it has to be adjusted, okay? And look for the concavity. And the difference, this is convex and look, this is concave. Look for the density. You see how it is more dense because it is contracted. See? And in this case also can be related to equipment setup or patient positioning and can, should be adjusted. And even now, the CAT system uh, uh, developed to, to assist radiologists in classifications of mammographic image. And there are three landmarks, pectoralis uh, muscles, breast borders, and the nipple has to be first detected automatically before the mammogram is to be analyzed for the breast cancers. See, and the segmentations of the pectoralis muscles now is an area of interest, encouraging for the research. It is a big issue. See, it is not just a pectoral is a major and the muscle is there or not. We have a lot of mammograms, a lot of mammograms. Huh? The pectoral is might not even shown at all and passing as negative mammogram. Do you agree or not? Negative, mammogram is negative normal mammogram. How we can write normal mammogram and the mammogram itself was not done properly. Okay, the most common positioning error on MLO, nipple not in profile, pectoralis muscle not seen, pectoralis muscle border not straight or convex, lower edge of pectoralis muscle above the posterior nipple line, inadequate coverage of the lower part, like sagging breast or cut off lower breast, 
mismatch of vectoralis nipple distance, non-visualization of the inframammary fold or skin folds. These are the common positioning error. What about this? This is a V shape. Yeah. That is why, why V-shape, per se, you see, is not an important factor. Yeah. Above much, the nipple. Much high, much high above the nipple. So yes. what is the benefit of being of being mirror image? Both are not adequate, similar. Both are not. The pectoral is insufficient and inframammary fall. Both are not there are not there. Okay. And what about this? Uh, inframammary fold is not uh, appearing. Yeah. So it is good, but the inframammary fold are not open. There is missing uh, factors. And this one? The pectoralis muscle uh, on the left, uh, on, the, yeah, on the right breast is uh, contracted, is concave and it's not mirror image. And the lower part, the inframatic fold is not appearing as well. Okay, so if you look here, if you compare the density uh, and opacity of the pectoralis between the right and left, this is more loosened and this is dense because it is contracted. And this, uh, uh, and it is deficient, is not wider in the axilla. It is narrow. It is narrow in the axilla. It is contracted. It is concave, and even both, it is above the posterior nipple line. See, this is a little bit. Yeah, this is it's okay. But here, it is above. This is the nipple. This is axis of the nipple. It is above the nipple, and the inframammary fold. There is overlap here. The overlap a little bit more. Here in the other press, there is some cutting. Small part is cut regarding the inframammary uh, fault. See? Okay. What about this image? No volunteer. Uh huh. Uh huh. This looks like CC. Looks like CC, or it is a CC. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh? It's a two. Does it look like a CC or it is a CC view? It's a CC. Why it is a CC? Um, from its shape, the um, pectoralis uh -huh. where is the image and the shape of the breast, yeah, it's not... Um, uh, the pectoralis, what you said pectoralis? In the CC, the pectoralis will not be there and I mean the shape of the breast here. Yani the nipple in the MLO, the nipple will be looking a bit downward. But in the CC, it will be in the center like this. There is no pectoralis here. Yes. What is this? Scalini muscle. Ah. Any volunteer? Yes, I agree with you. This is this is a CC view. This is this is a CC view. Okay. Uh huh. Yes, yes. You see, this is a semicircle. The shape of the breast is a semi with the nipple at the center. Okay, and the 
lateral medial part more or less equal symmetric and i could see i could see the pectoralis you see part of the pectoralis coming like a, a, a small part of convex as the center of the image. Uh -huh. but yes, this is a CC view. Is it an adequate CC view or not? It is not. Because I need uh, Because of what? Yes. Uh huh. The nipple uh, seen within the breast. It is uh, nothing. Where is the nipple within the breast? The inframomary fold is not pointed. Mm -hmm. The inframomary fold. It's not this is a marker. This is a skin marker here. That is a, this is. Who is talking now? Abir Al Hadi. The inframomary fold is not well open. Okay. In the CC view, you will see the inframomary fold. Can you imagine how you are doing the CC? The MLO. You will see up and down. So you will see the inframammary fall. In the CC view, you will see medial and lateral. So you will see the skin cleavage where instead of inframammary fall, and you have seen it here. This more or less, more or less, uh, more or less adequate. Yani, it is good. I cannot say perfect, but I can say good, good image. Why I can say good image? I can see up to the pectoralis. So the whole breast is being included. Mm -hmm. And the nipple in profile, but slightly not centered. If I draw a line here, Okay, to divide the breast, I'll see the nipple in this slightly off of this line. We'll go through that. This is craniocodal. So we said we have MLO and craniocodal. So the craniocodal is a second standard view of the of the uh, conventional 2D X-ray to ensure any part not seen in MLO to be visualized on the CC. And we mentioned that tissue missed in MLO mostly will be the medial tissue. So that is why on CC we have to compensate. We have to ensure that the medial breast is being included so as not to be missed in the two views. See? We have to demonstrate as much as we can the medial aspect of the breast on the CC view. If they brought for you a CC view without good uh, visualization of the medial breast, try to repeat it. Because generally in the MLO, because the medial part is a fixed part, uh, it's fixed to the, uh, to the chest wall, it's difficult to be pulled and to be included in the field of view. Is try to compensate on the CC view to visualize this part of the breast. Uh, demonstration of much, as much as of the lateral tissue as possible can accomplish without excessive exaggerations of the medial or lateral sides. So we have to equalize. We should not take part more exaggerations than the other part. Don't go more exaggerated toward the medial or more exaggerated toward the lateral, but ensure 
ensure at least most of the medial breast is being included in CC because this part definitely is deficient on MLO due to the fixation of the breast, okay, in the, in the superior medial part, and it will not easy be included in the field of view, okay? Uh, because the, the, the they are usually going for the lateral and the axillary tails and this uh, and this part, so it might miss part on the medial aspect of the breast. And as we mentioned before, the detector should be adjusted by the body habitus and best demonstrate the anterior the the CC view is best demonstrate the anterior central and medial, okay, posterior medial portion that were poorly visualized uh, uh, in, the, in the MLO, but it, it demonstrates that the lateral por portion of the breast is poorly visualized in the CC view, but is being compensated on the MLO. And it's important the technician has to stand on the medial aspect, as you have seen here, stand medial to that to the, to the patient, not lateral to him. Laterally will not result in an optimal CC view. This is very essential. If your technician is starting uh, standing on the lateral aspect and doing this, uh, definitely will result in poor CC view, and you have to tell her, please go and stand on her medial aspect. She will raise, she will put the detectors, you see, below the breast, but not much low down, so as to hang or not as close as the breast, so as to sag the breast. See, elevating the breast a little bit, uh, elevating the breast too high, uh, will lose the inferior and posterior tissue or too low, it will drop, eliminate the superior part of the breast. So we have to adjust it. And here, this is the illustration. The X-ray will come from craniocaudal, from up, from the head toward the feet. See, adding this image, adding this illustration, from above, down. And as here, the vector is flat, not with any angles, and the breast, the patient is standing straight and the breast is putting here. Look, the patient also has to lean forward to bring the posterior breast close to the, uh, to the detectors so as to ensure the superior and the posterior part of the breast is being included. Not like here, if the patient lean backward, part of the breast definitely will be cut as in this uh, image, see, or these pictures. So the bottom of the breast has to be supported and pulled so that the deeper and the lower most are included, like in this photograph. See, she's taking the breast by her hand. This is very essential from below. This is very essential so as to pull it uh, into the detector to ensure this part is being included. Uh, also, the shoulder, you see, it should be pushed inferiorly to make the pectoralis relax to ensure most of the lateral breast tissue, outer breast tissue, is being included. Okay? And a tip uh, to, to, to help to get lateral tissue better uh, uh, contact to the lateral portion of the breast by slight elevations of the ipsilateral arm and bending of the elbow. This is also will help to bring uh, the, uh, most of the lateral and put it at the corner of the receptors. Uh, this will help most of the lateral aspect which will be included into the image. Visualization of the pectoral is on the CC view, ensure that the posterior breast is being included. So, 
the international quality standard of the CC positioning criteria are inconsistent. There are no, yani, like in the MLO, in the MLO, we have the pectoralis muscles, the key factors, depending on the pectoralis, we can say this is good or bad quality image. But regarding the uh, CC view, the anterior landmarks is the nipple. Okay? The nipple should be in profile, should be centered. But regarding the posterior portion, we have different, different uh, criteria to evaluate. If we could see the pectoralis, so we ensure the posterior breast is being included, as in this case. I could see the pectoralis here, that means, and the, the, the medial and lateral aspect, more or less symmetrical. So that means the posterior breast is included. If I could not see it, I will look for the retromammary fat. If the breast is fatty, so there is no differentiation between uh, the mammary and retromammary zones. In this case, I will go for a third measurement, which is the posterior nipple lines. So what about this, this TC view? Look. Definitely this is inadequate. There is tilting. There is enrolling of the nipple coming within and there is overlapping of the abdominal tissue, abdominal muscles over the, the, the medial aspect of the breast here. But here, this I could see the skin reflections and skin cleavage of the medial aspect of the breast is well visualized like the inframammary fault. See, on, the, on this image, this is adequate. But here, uh, there is overlap. This is not an adequate. Okay. Is it adequate, this one? Yeah, nipple is in profile and center. But regarding the posterior breast, I could not see the pectoralis. And I can see breast tissue here. I could not see retromammary fat. So I'm not sure the whole breast is being included or not in this uh, CC view. But at least it's the whole, more or less, you see, the medial and lateral, they are trying to be more or less symmetrical. We should not take one part in expense on the others. And also the nipples, look here, the nipple is in profile. Nipple here is enrolling hmm, down. That is why it's coming within the breast tissue. And this is usually occur in obese uh, people, obese women, the nipple is enrolling uh, down and coming within inferiorly and coming within the breast tissue rather than being in profile. And also if the patient is standing uncomfortable, moving slightly, see, might uh, result in movement of the nipple to, to get uh, below the breast and coming within. What about the nipple position here? Is it adequate or not? Please. Huh? Adequate. Adequate. In terms of? Yeah. In profile. In profile. Any other criteria regarding the nipple in the CC view? Yes, it is uh, slightly extended laterally. Yeah. Okay. This is the midline. The nipple is expected to be here. So now it is on the, uh -huh. this the is my this, this, this is in the CC view. This is the lateral, outer. This is a, this is and this? The inner. The inner or medial. So it is tilting medially. 
So uh -huh. the question is lateral. So the nipple is not the center. Yeah. The nipple should be depicted in profile and must be centered. There are two criteria regarding the nipple on the CC view. Uh -huh. What about this one? A, B, and C. So in A, it's slightly, it's slightly tilted upward. In the B, uh, retro memory fat is not clear. And in C, regarding the nipple, 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 nipple. Okay. Only nipple. Only in the pill type, uh, fill, uh, A, it is uh, slightly tilt upward. Uh, in B, uh, downwards, yeah, okay, acceptable, not acceptable, it is downward. And uh, in C, also uh, upward. Downward or upward in the CC view, my Julie? Uh, in A, uh, yeah, above the line, above the central line, I mean. Yes, but, but yeah, no, uh, when, when I see the, the, the CC view, it is uh, the nibble is not in the center on the view. Agree, but we are talking about but CC what? view. A is perfect nipple. A is perfect at the center and in profile. While B and C though are in profile, the B is tilted medially and C is tilted. Oh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> sorry. That is why I'm, I'm telling, is it down or up? You are talking about the CC view. Okay. And yes, so. what about this one? The following point we have to analyze. We have to look for the nipple, as we mentioned, in profile and centered. The nipple in profile and centered. Yeah. So, nice the posterior uh, nipple line within one centimeter. But if I could see the pectoralis muscle, no need for the posterior nipple line. Presence of pectoralis as shown here in both sides in sh and the page and the lateral, there is no exaggerations in lateral or medial both. Yani both sides are more or less uh, equal. So that means ensure the whole breast. And even here, I could see the retromammary fat in both sides, lateral and medial. So this is perfect CC view, bilateral CC view. But it is not always, it is not always achievable, the visualization of the big brands. It's been seen in 30 to 40%, okay? according to the ACR manual. And recently, by improving the skills of positioning, it can be seen up to 30%. See? Okay, what about this? Is it good or bad? Bilateral CC view. Mm -hmm. The pectoral apply the criteria um, the nipples are not uh, first pectoralis muscle uh, is not uh, shown in the image okay. since i could not see the pectoralis i will go for the second we said variables the factors are inconsistent we have many factors if one factor is not, not applicable we will go for the other factors the there other factors we will go for the third one so the yes, vectoral is not there. I will go for the nipple. fat. Can you yeah. see the Which is, fat? Yeah, no, it's cut it. I can see it on the medial, but I could not see it on the lateral. I can see brinkima. I don't know the brinkima is going for how long. Okay, for how much, Shan? The brinkima here. I don't know if it is going more or not. So I have is not applicable. So the remaining is if mm -hmm. I could not evict the pectoralis or retromammary fat, remain for me is posterior nipple. <laughs> so when measured, it was not adequate. And when they repeated, look, this 
is part of the pectoralis seen here. And the other one, I could see the fat, retromammary fat behind the, when they repeat the image, okay? So definitely I'm sure a lot of mammography like this, like this image being reported. Do you agree with me? Yeah. As a good image, come on. <laughs> but if you look here, this is not a, a good one. We have to repeat it. Okay. So we said, if we could not in this, in this, I could see the pectoralis in the left. I could not see the pectoralis here. I will go for the retromammary or retroglandular fat, but I have no glands. I have no mammary to, to, to the, all the breast is fatty. So the retromammary fat is not applicable. I have to go for measurement of the posterior nipple line. So to measure the posterior nipple line, I have to make sure first the nipple are well aligned. Nipple well aligned. Okay. After nipple aligned, I will draw a line from the posterior nipple to the end of the fill or to the pectoralis if I could see the pectoralis. If I could not see the pectoralis, to the end of the image. Here, this is along the axis, both along the axis of the nipple. This is the axis of the nipple. The axis of the nipple. The axis here of the nipple is oblique. Well, the axis is parallel, straight the one. Okay, so the posterior nipple line is a descriptors for the, uh, for, uh, the descriptors for a line draw drawn from the posterior nipple to the pectoral as if it's seen on the uh, CC view, if it is not seen to the end of the image, okay? And the same from the posterior nipple along the axis of the nipple to the end of the image or to the pectoralis. It should be perpendicular to the pectoralis in the MLO, okay? And same for the C, regardless if the pectoral is seen or not, just draw the line. For the MLO, as we mentioned, to the, to the back of the pectoral is when, or to the back of the image, whichever comes first, okay? The posterior nipple line is drawn along the nipple axis. We have to go along the nipple axis. Right. MLO, there might be variations in the orientations of the posterior nipple line. And at the end, the, we have to measure this line and to measure this line. And the two lines in the two views should be within one centimeter. Should not, the difference between the two lines should not exceed one centimeter difference. And that is why they set the posterior nipple line or the one centimeter rule. Okay, this is the posterior nipple line on MLO going along the axis to the pectoralis, see? And it was 11.5. And this here to the end of the image, and it is less than 10.5. So it is within one centimeter. It is an adequate CCV. Okay. And if we look here, even part of the pectoralis is visualized and the posterior retromammary gland is seen. So by all criteria is adequate CCV. Right. As we mentioned, the posterior nipple line, a line drawn from the nipple and at an upward angle perpendicular to the edge of the pectoralis muscles. Adequate positioning of the mid MLO view may be assessed also by the posterior nipple line. 
how come uh, in if the posterior nipple line okay reach the tip of the pectoralis muscle in 80 or more of the cases when the MLO is perfect is a good MLO it will it will reach the uh, the tip of the uh, pectoralis muscles and we'll see example of different case this here i could not see the pectoralis here the pectoralis is deficient so the line is going to the end of the image we are not sure this is not this is not an adequate mlo so the posterior nipple line having a limited value because um, I, I refer the CC view to the MLO to make sure the posterior breast is adequate or not. But the MLO itself, I'm not sure if the posterior breast is there or not. So it has very limited value. And not only that, sometimes you might measure the line here and you find that this line is exceeding, can exceeding the line here. So I could see much more posterior tissue in the CC view more than the MLO view. And in this case, it will not be an applicable and definitely you need to repeat your image. Another situation in which the posterior nipple line is compromised when the nipple is not in profile. If the nipple is not in profile, so in this case, you have to uh, repeat the, uh, your image. Uh, uh -huh. What about this case? Is it adequate CC view? Mm -hmm. No. Why? The uh, outer part is a little bit Okay. So it might be at Yani the image taken at it is end. Before I say no, I have to make sure. Uh, we need yes. to see the MLO. I, I need to see the MLO and to, to, to compare the posterior nipple line. Here, pectoral is not applicable and the retromammary fat is not applicable. So remain the posterior nipple line. I have to see that MLO is good, good MLO, perfect MLO, okay? Yes. So what the difference between the two lines is? Less than one centimeter. So less than one centimeter and good MLO and then it will so, in profile. So it's adequate. Adequate. This is an adequate CC. It is within the the one centimeter roll okay so the most common positioning error on cc is nipple not in profile nipple position is not centered either lateral either lateral or medial poor visualization of the posterior tissue poor visualization of the of superior tissue okay we said we we describe how to put the, the breast to avoid cutting of the superior or to avoid cutting of the inferior or uh, inadequate amount of vectoralis major on the image and excessive exaggeration of the uh, on the medial or lateral views or the skin falls. Okay, and here there are many positioning dilemma and how it's being corrected posterior nipple line on the CC view less than one centimeter is skin reflection of cleavage film medial and the medial aspect of the breast not seen, retroglandular fat not seen, lateral skin fold seen, nipple not center, positioning on flat plate detectors with large field of view. All these are a dilemma and how to be corrected, you can refer to the slices. Um, what about this? It's okay. The 
The pectoralis muscles are above uh, the nipple, far high above the nipple, mm -hmm. and uh, the inframammary folds are not there in the view. It's obviously cut. Yes. And even you can see the, the parenchyma here very close from the two sides. But this is not, this is, it has to be repeated. Inadequate, inadequate mammogram it has to be repeated. There are multiple mistakes. And the nipple even not in profiles, the edge of the pectoral is not adequate, no V shapes. Uh, a lot of issues in primary not seen. Yeah, and even the, the, the shape of vectoralis here is different from the shape of vectoralis. This is coming here and this is coming here. This is not a V shape and so forth. So the diagnostic quality, you see the reported system are uh, run into as perfect, good, moderate or inadequate. They was uh, BGMI system was most commonly globally used. Uh, this abbreviation for perfect, good, moderate, inadequate is a UK system. And there is another system not currently uh, used also, uh, lacking uh, the reliability and validity regarding uh, the, the, the grading or the scoring system include excellent, acceptable, and inadequate quality. This is not no more used. Though the BGMI is still used, but the new system, you see, is BJ, uh, BJGAI. Perfect, good, adequate. Uh, and inadequate classifications. This the potentially most valid and reliable evidence to date regarding inclusion and wording of descriptions. See? The mammography glands contain fewer anatomical fixed landmarks than solid organ do, and the quality assurance goal need to be continually reassessed to ensure that reflect changing technology, evidence base, and the skills of breast positioning, compositions, and technique selections improve diagnostic quality. And this is the BGMI criteria you see regarding the MLO and uh, the CC view and the inclusions regarding the uh, inclusions of the press, correct image identification system, as we mentioned before, and all the eight criteria, correct exposure, good compressions, correct uh, proce uh, processing, absence of artifacts, skin fold, symmetric images. And when all criteria are perfect and good, are present, the image criteria regarding CC, there are ME criteria we mentioned regarding the CC, ME criteria regarding the MLO. When all the criteria are perfect and present, then it will be perfect image. When some minor criteria being missed can be good and so forth, decreasing uh, in grading to moderate to inadequate. Okay. This is regarding the MLO and so forth. Okay. Uh, what about this image? Is it adequate MLO? Huh? Anyone is there? Is this it's adequate? Inadequate as the pectoralis muscle is not shown at all. Yes. So it has to be repeated. This is inadequate. When repeated, look. There is malignancy at the posterior breast. This is from literature. This is our case. Is this CC view is adequate? Uh, is it adequate? Nipple in profile and center and medial equal the lateral. 
But since we do not see the pectoralis muscle, we need to, to see the MLO to see. Uh, uh, okay. I could not see the pectoralis and I could not see the retro. Retro member. So I need to do MLO. The posterior yes, the nipple, the posterior nipple lines in the two views to ensure that it is within one, one centimeter, centimeter roll. And it was not within one centimeter roll. You see no, the roll? So we repeat it. And after repetitions, look, we reach the end of the press and yes, we found yes. we found malignancy at the part of the breast. And you have to be cautious. Since 73 of breast cancer located in the peripheral and retromammary fat. So adequate visualization of this area, as well as having good quality image are of utmost importance. We repeat the we repeat the image. Otherwise, we will miss this cancer. Okay, positioning has been cited as the single most important factor in optimizing mammographic image quality, and the variability in positioning can have an even greater effect on mammography than it has on other imaging examination in the body. The effect of abnormal positioning or improper positioning on mammography, the drawback is much, much, much more ra rather than the rest of the body. So it will give a uh, patient, so given patient and equipment variables, this uh, is not surprising that positioning continues to be challenging to quality of mammographic practice. And as, as the positioning is the most important key we describe, it will affect if it is insufficient or result in insufficient compression, can result in artifact that result in inadequate demonstration of breast tissue. Large volume might not be image, as you have seen. So can result in a poor quality image, inconclusive study. And in this situation, the skills of the radiologist, it will be irrelevant. It will not help him to solve the patient problem can easily miss breast cancer because the mammographic sensitivity, it will be very low due to emic quality, due to poor emic quality. That is why radiologists must insist on well-positioned, proper mammographic image. Remind the radiographer generally why they are using the criteria and work continuously, continuously and support him to have a dedicated technologist. Try to obtain the best image for every patient. High quality imaging require highly motivated technologists who continue consistently or constantly seek to improve uh, its quality. And if you remember this from this lecture, I'll be happy. Just remember the pectoralis in MLO, it has to be wider at the axilla. It's apex down below the extent down below the posterior nipple line with convex or straight border. See? Because depend on this, I can evaluate for the MLO as well as for the CC view. The CC view, I, it will be referred to the MLO to be evaluated if it is adequate or not. 
and regardless of the experience and expertise of the radiology technologist, the perfect image cannot be produced 100%. Sometimes, as you look here, the nipple a little bit within the breast. However, we have perfect pectoralis. Not always we could see all the criteria perfectly, but we can compensate. If I could see the nipple in profile in single view is enough, okay? And, but in the, in the MLO, the pectoralis, it should be proper. It, the criteria for the pectoralis in the MLO, which it is the key factors. It is the utmost important factors. We have to concentrate on that. See? And certain percentage of patients will need another view to properly image all of the prestige. We have to rem remember that. And this percentage will vary from institution to the another and uh, depend on the experience and so forth. Among women 40 or more years old, periodic screening mammography may reduce deaths due to cancer by up to 50%. Therefore, the level of image quality attains for screening mammography is clearly of life-saving importance. Because you know, without good quality, you cannot pick cancer, even big cancer, not even only small cancer. So we need to have a good quality and the optimum mammography positioning technique is necessary, necessary to optimize and to maximize the cancer detections. And reminder, we want to see pink closes, pink ribbons everywhere and celebrate with October and Thank you very much. Any question? Are you there? Thank you very much, Dr. Rabab. Jazakallah khairan. Wa jazakum. Shukran. Aizin an shukrik, Dr. Rabab. Azam Allah ajak. Jazakum Allah khairan. Shukran ala sabrakum. Ma'ai. Hello. Aywa. Bismillah. السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام كيف الحال دكتورة؟ أهلا وسهلا May I, may I say a couple of words؟ تفضل دكتور تفضل بروف يعني if any, anybody looking at your image will be يعني uh, feeling very challenged how to produce such good images as you are producing and I think there are preconditions that has to be satisfied in order to try to reach the standard you are producing and you are giving us here in great detail and with great confidence. I like your confidence about the quality of the work you are producing. So That's the following, the following, it should be an atmosphere. In no other, you said in, in, in mammography, no other uh, examination depends on positioning as mammography does. Yes. On top of that, I think more cooperation. No other, in no other technique, cooperation between the technologist and the patient and the radiologist is necessary. So, and the person's your right. Yeah. So the, if, the, if the technologist is not gentle and understanding and explaining to the patients, he will never, he will never produce good uh, mammograms, number one. Number two, if your technologist, and please, and I like you to use the word technologist, particularly for our uh, uh, colleagues in the Sudan. They no more use the word radiographer and they no more use the word uh, technician and they don't most use the word family. They use technologies and um, TACNI. That's their classification by the registration board in the Sudan. 
So please refer to this because some of them are maybe in your audience as well. We have to have a very strong, it has to be a dedicated team. It has to be a dedicated radiologist, not a one-off doing somebody looking at one case per week. He should not be doing um, women imaging or we shouldn't be doing breast imaging. It has to be a dedicated radiologist, full-time. Maybe, yes, not quite full-time, at least 50% or 60%, six sessions in the week, mammography divided between screening and um, uh, hot cases and walk-in cases and clinic cases, symptomatic breast, in other words, partly symptomatic or mostly symptomatic and partly. I know screening is not practiced in the country, but it will come and people have to prepare for it. The other four sessions, there is an option that they can do something else, but the majority should be breast. And the other thing is that if he's not seeing a total of about like 6,000 in a year, he is not fit to do, or she is not fit to do this uh, uh, procedure. Secondly, I think it's, it's, it's teamwork, teamwork for the personnel, the nurse, the, the, the education staff, uh, the receptionist, the consultant, the technologist, all of them teamwork, they should work together. The equipment all itself is teamwork. Like you showed one case earlier on where there was a cyst, cystic lesion below, uh, ultrasound was showing it why people were discussing what's that and what's this. So it's the team of armaments. Don't look at the mammogram alone. Mammogram plus ultrasound, that's possible. And of course, if necessary, then there are different indications for, for MRI. And also I must say that we who are not dedicated uh, breast radiologists, we see a lot of breasts. Where do we see it? We see it on CT. On CT, you pick up a lot of uh, the um, breast lesions. Of course, the uh, again, the staging will come in that, but there are a lot of incidental or accidental findings on the breast on CT. So again, um, ultrasound CT and mammography go together go together and should be always, I hope in your next talks, you all should always correlate. I know you're now doing the basics of one item, right? but keep reminding them because some people might not listen to the whole course. It's a long course. So whenever you find time, throw some of these with them. Yes, I have, I have some of the cases, yes. I tried even to, 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 to collect some of my cases that I could beat uh, uh, breast lesion on CT, then they request for them uh, conventional breast imaging. Excellent. It can't be better. What you've done is superior. Yes, you, you, I totally agree with you, and especially for, for the technologists, doing or the, um, doing breast, breast imaging and if he's not a dedicated one it will be difficult for him uh, to do uh, or to bring for us a, an optimum or at least a readable mammography adequate adequate mammography there will be a lot of a lot of uh, skills it need to be uh, even yani, uh, teach for them to do to do mammography specifically mammography and even even how to handle with the patients those are a specific type of patients the patient coming afraid from cancer her concern is breast cancer she is very tense if if she don't know how to deal with this woman and she's doing, uh, she's doing compression, and they are coming in their mind. This is a painful technique, and a lot of issue. If if they are not dedicated uh, technologists or or radiographer, it will be difficult 
to do uh, a good mammography. And even they're teaching them to tell them not, not to ask the woman, go to the right or go to the left. Just to tell her, uh, go toward me, or can you shift a little bit away from me? So a specific wording, wording and while we are talking with them. And for me, I have experience yani, with, uh, with some of the technologies starting from zero. I start with them doing the mammography from zero up to become a dedicated mammographer, mashallah. But they had, they had interest on that. Thank you very, very much, Prof. يعني وجودك شرفنا كثير جدا وبدينا دفعات دفعات كبيرة وإن شاء الله دائما يعني ونتمنى إنه الأمور تمشي على خير ووضعنا في السودان يتحسن وتجي المشينس وأكيد في ناس عندهم إنترست الأمور تمشي على أفضل كثير جدا ويكون عندنا dedicated radiologist و dedicated technologist وكله يكون يعني زي ما زي ما نتمناه أكثر إن شاء الله. شكرا.